together everything we've seen so far by setting up two separate steps, one with document as the action step and another with document as the trigger step. In this example, we want to start a workflow in document when we create a new record in Airtable. Then we want to send that started workflow to our client to finish. Once that workflow is finished by the client, we want the client to receive their documents. And then we want that same record in Airtable to be updated with the additional information that our client added in document. So to set this up, first we're going to create a Zap with document as the action step. In this example, we're using the same app with document both times. We're using Airtable in both the trigger and the action, but you could accomplish the same thing with different applications in the trigger step and different applications in the action step as well. Here, I'll choose Airtable as my trigger, and I'm going to choose to trigger this step when a new record is created. Next, I'll come to my action step and choose document. I'm going to create and populate a new session and select my document account. Then I'll choose the workflow that I would like to use. And in this case, I'm going to choose to skip the review page. Next, I'll map my fields from Airtable to my fields in document. Once I've mapped all the fields that I would like to pull from Airtable into my document workflow, when a new record is created, I'll click continue. Then I'm going to add a third step where I send the continuation URL from document to my client so that they can complete their intake workflow. I'm going to send this to the email that I entered for the client when I created my record in Airtable. And in the body of the message, I'll include the continuation URL. I'll also add instructions telling the client to follow this URL to complete their workflow. Here I've added some instructions in the body of our message, and then I'll test the zap and turn it on. Now we have the first step set up so that when we create a new record in Airtable, it will create a section in document and populate it with some information from this record. And then it will email the continuation link to our client. Next, we want to set up another Zap so that when our client finishes that workflow, their record in Airtable will be updated with the additional information that they provide. To set up the second Zap, this time we'll use document as the trigger. We'll choose workflow completed as the trigger event, connect our account, and then we'll choose the same workflow name that we chose for the first step. So here, this is my intake. As a second step, I'm going to choose Airtable as my app, and then I'm going to choose to find a record as my action event. I'll connect my account, and then I'm going to choose the same base and table as I used in my first zap. And I'll choose to search by a field that has some identifying information and that we pass to document in the first step. So here I'm going to choose the name. And then for the search value, we'll pick the field in document, which is going to contain this value from Airtable. So I remember that in my first zap, I took the name from Airtable and put it in the client name field in document. So that's what I'm going to choose here. Then I'm going to add a third step. And again, I'm going to choose Airtable. For this action event, I'm going to choose to update a record. Again, I'll select my account and the same base and table that we've used before. Then in the record section, I'll click in this dropdown, click custom, click on the find or create record in Airtable step and choose ID. Then in any field I want to update in Airtable with data from document, I'll click choose workflow completed in document and map the document variable that I would like to use in this Airtable field. Once I've mapped all my fields, I'll turn on my zap. I'll check that my zaps are both on and then I'll add a new record in Airtable to test this. When I add a new record in Airtable, my first zap will be triggered. And then this email will be sent to my client asking them to continue the form. When the client follows that continuation URL, they'll come to our workflow. With the data that we've entered in Airtable and mapped to these fields already populated for them, then they can just finish the rest of the workflow. Once the client completes the workflow, they can access their documents. Then when we reopen Airtable, we can see that this record has been updated with the additional information that we entered in document. 